Hey there guys, Russell K. Day one is in the books. Sorry for the bad audio. I'm literally sitting on the balcony of my room to try and make it a little bit quiet because you know the whole family's in the room. And so yeah, this is the only place I could have and it's a little loud out here. But if you could tell my, by my voice, Russell K. Day one was an absolute blast. The vendor room for day one was stacked with names that I've re really been wanting to meet for a while and then now I am able to check off names such as to Jerry and I finally am able to get my boogeyman poster signed and we're going to look at all that stuff here in a minute. But I get there, I'm a little bit late to the Jimmy Hart Q&A, I think it was called Behind My Music, but I walk in and I mean he was talking about some pretty cool stuff, really enjoyed what I was able to hear from that. And then straight from there I went, left that room, got in line for TZ's table which was in the exact same room. So basically I just went went out, then came back in. TZ came out, I'm a huge fan of his. I watch a lot of his interviews that he does with a lot of different wrestlers. So I was definitely very excited to be able to watch this interview. And he actually did two different kinds of interviews. The first one he did first out was Janai Kai. And then after her came Savannah Evans. So then the three of them, TZ, Janai, and Savannah, talked about a variety of different things. They talked about some goals that they have set for themselves or, or that they want to accomplish in the next year or in their entire career. Janai talked about her gruesome, horrible neck injury that she suffered right before COVID. And yeah, they just talked about a variety of stuff. And then Caleb Conley decided to join them. So obviously I'm a big Caleb Conley fan, so I was excited to hear what he had to say, and he gave his career goals. And then of course, TZ being into the music business, they started talking about their favorite types of music and stuff, and they really just had a big variety of topics. I really enjoyed those, that Q&A. And then Janai, Savannah, and Caleb went off on their way, and Violent J came in. I don't know too much about Violent J. We didn't stay in that Q&A panel for too long, but I did stay long enough to hear a little bit. And then we headed off to the vendor room. First up, I'm going to show you guys the pictures that we took in the vendor room. First up, we got to Jerry. And he doesn't really speak English, so Sonny Ono really talked for him the entire time. And then we took a picture with the boogeyman. I bought two autographs from him, and the picture took, came with it, and so we took the picture. The Boogeyman's really fun and he's a very nice guy, so really enjoyed meeting him. And also got to take a picture with TZ. So let's start off with the items that I got in the vendor room. Let's start off with the Boogeyman. This is an art print made by AJ Moore that I got two years ago, which was, was just waiting to meet him. Finally got to meet him so he could sign my art print. Really enjoy this art print and finally got it signed for this thing to be ready to go up on the wall. So let's look at what else I got from Boogeyman. Right here is where Boogeyman signed my encyclopedia. I had to put the flash on, not the best lighting out here. But yes, he did sign it in paint pen. I love paint pen autographs and he signed it in the red. Looking really nice there in my encyclopedia. And another one I was able to meet was Al Snow right there. He signed his head and he also signed as Al Snow. Very cool. Like I said, I got the picture with Tajiri and he also signed my encyclopedia. And this is definitely one that I've been wanting to meet for a long time. He still lives in Japan. So it's one that was a big dream. Didn't know if I would ever be able to meet him. But and it, whenever the get I mean whenever Russell Kate asked for a request of who we want them to bring in, I put Tajiri every single year. And finally my wishes came true and I've been able to meet Tajiri. And last, but certainly not least, out of people that I got in my encyclopedia for today, I also got Roadkill right here. Super cool to be able to get Roadkill in here. Enjoyed him in his ECW days and one I've always wanted in here. And every year I always make a poster to get signed. And so let's take a look at the progress of people that I've got on here so far. Right here we got Caitlin Marie. She's an indie wrestler right there. And then I got TZ from TZ's table. And then I got Janai Kai, which that autograph did not show up well. And then I also was able to get Speedball Mike Bailey. So definitely happy to get these one, two, three, four autographs 
on here for day one. And then it was time for the GCW show. And I'm someone that had never been to a GCW live show before, and so I was definitely very excited because I've heard great things about the promotion. I've seen some of their matches, and I know it gets hardcore and crazy. And so I'm going to give you guys a GCW show review and ratings. First up is this 10-man tag match. This is a five-on-five, five, and I didn't know everybody in there just because I'm not very familiar with GCW, but... Fuego Del Sol, who has made AEW appearances, was in there, and so was Fakade, somebody that I've seen on the indie scene before. And there was a lot happening, and it honestly was a great match. It just really wasn't that long to where it couldn't reach up to a high rating, so I am going to give it a B-, minus. but for the time that they were given, it, it was very, very good. And as always, Fuego Del Sol put on a show, and so did Fakade. They both did great. And then some dude lifted up that really big guy that was in the match, and that was very impressive because when I tell you that one dude was big, he was huge. Oh, yeah, and I also forgot to say that 10-man match was not announced, and a lot of the match had different participants than how it was listed. So yeah, when I put in my predictions, I... I it was completely different people than what was actually wrestling. And this match right here is a prime example. This is supposed to be Maki Ito versus Kenzie Page, except it ended up being Maki Ito versus Kylie Alexa. And their match didn't go on for too long, but man, the crowd was so hyped for Maki. I mean, the whole, they were screaming for her. And then the other girl was a great heel. So the crowd was really into it. They just really didn't have that much time in the ring to where I really can't put it anywhere above a C. And then, boo, coming out to the ring was Matt Cardona, accompanied by Steph DeLander. And, of course, the crowd was crazy against Matt Cardona. He poured a water bottle on somebody. He was flicking off everybody. It was very entertaining. And Steph DeLander was a great manager. There was a lot of heat in this match against Speedball Mike Bailey. And, of course, the crowd loves Speedball Mike Bailey. He's a phenomenal talent. Both are very phenomenal wrestlers. But, really, there wasn't too much in-ring work going on. But it, if we're grading this on entertainment, this is a really high level. But mainly for the entertainment, I'm going to have to give this match a B plus. It really was very solid. And Matt Cardona, of course, ended up cheating his way to get the victory. But there really was a time when I was convinced that Speedball Mike Bailey could get the win. Next up is a very solid match between Masha Slamovich and Jordan Oliver. In watching this match, you couldn't tell it was an intergender match because they really went against each other like, like it's like a regular men on men, women versus women. Like they didn't hold back just because the difference between genders. And it was very entertaining. Masha was slinging him around, then he definitely got his round of hits in. But after a very solid match, Jordan Oliver did end up getting the win. And there was a really nice place in this match where Masha did a great move in the corner. It was a very nice move. I didn't get it on recording, but I am going to give this match a B. I'm sorry for all the loud feedback in the background. There's a kid down near the balcony where I can you can really hear them. They're down there screaming and playing and stuff. So, yeah, that's what you hear. And then there was a very fun match between Action Mike Jackson. Of course, he is a very old for still working in the ring like he does walking the ropes and everything he he's up there in age and then he was against oh, michael jackson wannabe like i say but yes this is santana jackson and like i said they act like michael jackson and so then of course there was some fun parts in the match where mike jackson would act like he's michael jackson for a little bit just to kind of play with the role and then I out the win. I didn't think he would do it. I thought Mike Jackson would do it, but it was a pretty decent match. And of course, I didn't have very high expectations for it just because of the age of Mike Jackson, but I thought it was pretty solid, and I'm going to give it a C plus. And unfortunately, I didn't get any pictures of the next match, and it wasn't announced. This was Richard Holiday versus Caleb Conley, and this was a very fun match. Richard Holiday is a great heel. I didn't know much about him going into the match, but Hey, first impressions are lasting impressions, and this 
my first impression of him was very great. I thought he did a great job. And, of course, I'm a huge fan of Caleb Conley, so I already knew that it would be a pretty decent match. But near the end, Caleb Conley was thrown through a door, and Richard Holiday ended up pulling out the win, and I'm going to give this match a B-. minus. And then the next match was Violent J, Effie, and Ally Catch the Extreme Clown Bussy versus the Mortons and George South. And of course, this match was going to be fun with Violent J and everybody in there. And then Kerry Morton being a great heel and George South being a fan favorite. George South ended up turning on Kerry Morton and Ricky Morton. He, well, actually, he ended up leaving the match because they wanted him to hold down Ally Catch. And he said, I'm not going to hold down a girl. And so he left, and then he came back out in face paint, in, like, the whole violent J-looking face paint, and ended up helping the insane clown Bussy get the win. And this match was just so fun. It was very, a lot, a lot of comedy was going on. And because of how fun and entertaining this match was, I'm going to give it a B+. And then the next match was Blake Christian versus Billy Starks. And this match went on for a great amount of time, and they really were putting in that work. I mean, that they, they were working fast, and they were working very clean moves. I was very, very impressed by the both of them. There were so many close pins that ha had everybody on the edge of their seats, and so I think it was a great match. Oh, I don't remember if I said, but Blake Christian did end up pulling out the win. And then at the end, Blake Christian act like he was going to be a good guy. He said, now I've never actually thanked somebody at the end of my match. And he said, and I'm not going to start it today. Then he jumped Billy Starks, and he's talking all this trash. And next thing you know, Nick Gage is coming out. He threw Blake through a door. He, I, he did a bunch of different stuff. And then he stood in the ring with Billy Starks and basically said, yeah, this is my Winston-Salem gang. I love you guys and everything. Just basically thanking the crowd and saying great job to Billy Starks. And Nick Gage confused the entire crowd. I don't care what anybody in the crowd says. We all thought that the show was over because he basically said goodbye. Like, it sounded like it was the end of the show. So we're standing up getting ready to leave. And then Joey Janela's music hit. So then it was time for the main event with Mance Warner versus Joey Janela. And we know that Joey Janela is a phenomenal talent and can put on a banger match. And I didn't know quite, know quite as much about Mance Warner, but I knew a little bit and I knew he was a pretty good talent. Just didn't know everything about him. But this match was absolutely crazy. They threw, I, I mean, they had, they threw each other through about as many doors that's in my house. They, uh, there was a lot of doors that got broken during this match. And there is so many cool parts in this match. I'm just going to play some of the highlights that I got on video on your screen. But these guys really put their lives on the line for this match. They would do crazy dives and just a bunch of crazy stuff. And Mance Warner was bleeding everywhere. And when I mean everywhere, I mean everywhere. I got to blur all the blood and stuff because I'm not allowed to put it on here. But it's safe to say that that match was absolutely amazing, and I have no other option but to give it an A. I have to give it an A because these guys absolutely, like I said, they put their lives on the line. And so this was an absolute great first day of WrestleCade, and I'm excited for tomorrow because tomorrow is the big day like it always is. Saturday has the big fan fest with everybody and, of course, the Super Show. So great job to Russell Cade to start this week off strong. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm going to post about tomorrow and everything that I got tomorrow. And, of course, I will grade the Super Show. And so I'll see you guys on the next one.